Hello, today we're going to talk about nuclear decay and I'm going to, um, we're going to talk about, you know, why an atom might um, have an unstable nucleus and then the different kinds of decay and how to predict um, the products or the reactants using nuclear equations. So the first thing I want to show you is this plot here. All right, so this is frequently something you will see in reference to nuclear decay. So each of these dots here represents an atom that is stable, or a nucleus that is stable. <clears throat> and if you remember, what's in the nucleus is our protons, which is the same as the atomic number. And the symbol we use for that is Z. I don't know why, but that's what it is. All right, and then on the other side, um, on the y-axis, we have the number of neutrons. So protons and neutrons are the two things in our nucleus. All right. Um, for s relatively small atoms, as you saw with um, the build an atom simulation, for relatively small atoms, we want about the same number of protons and neutrons. And that's what this line represents. So if every atom was stable with an equal number of protons and neutrons, all the dots would be on that line. Right. Um, but not all of them are. So as we get larger, right, so as our number of protons goes up, we need more neutrons present to neut or to help stabilize all that positive charge in the nucleus. So um, there's this force in the nucleus that holds it together, um, but there's also repulsion that happens between the protons. Because if you remember, like charges are going to repel each other. And so having that many positive charges in one tight space is, is difficult. And the neutrons help um, stabilize that. But once we get above a certain number, all right, so I believe the number is 84. Um, once we get to polonium, every nucleus above that or larger than that is going to be unstable. So if you look at your periodic table or the one in the classroom, you'll see that you have that little radioactive symbol for everything from polonium on up. Okay, um, and then there are some unstable nuclei, nuclei that are smaller than that too, but for every element below polonium, you have some um, isotopes that are stable, at least. So some of them will be unstable, but there are, is at least one that is going to be stable if it's smaller than that. All right, so um, just to, to reiterate, close to uh, the same number of protons and neutrons as we have small atoms. As we get bigger, we need, need more neutrons. That's why these are above the line um, to make it stable. And then once we get to polonium, number 84, they're too big to be stable. And so those will always be radioactive. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to go over a couple of kinds of nuclear decay. I am not going to make you memorize um, the specific types in a lot of detail. So basically this is what you need to know. Um, so for alpha decay, uh, you have one nucleus, all right, it is unstable. And in order to get more stable, it gives off an alpha particle, all right? An alpha particle is two protons and two neutrons, which is shown here, right? And so the two for the number of protons is down here and two plus two would be our mass and that's the number up here, that would be four. For beta decay, we will emit a beta particle. So in um, beta decay, a beta particle is always one of our products. And actually, it's it looks just like an electron. The thing that's a little strange about a beta particle is it comes from the nucleus, which we know is not where electrons are. And that's because we're converting a neutron into a proton. And so that's how we, um, that's where that negative charge comes from. So when that happens, we actually add on an additional proton in the nucleus because one of our neutrons becomes a proton. But the mass doesn't change because the number of particles in the nucleus remains the same. All right, and then the other two we're gonna talk about are nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. So nuclear fission, we have a large atom, all right? Um, it is unstable, and then we add to it one neutron which causes it to break apart, all right? So when we add that one neutron, we're basically just adding one to the mass, okay? This step we don't usually show, but just for clarity, I'm gonna show it to you here, all right? And then that breaks apart, and you get two smaller daughter nuclei, and they're not always the same. They always need to add up to the mass of what you started with, but they aren't always the same thing, all right? Um, one little mnemonic that students use to help remember that is fission is division. So you have something big and you're dividing it into smaller pieces. And then another characteristic of fission is that we always get 
um, extra neutrons. And so those neutrons can then um, cause another fission reaction to happen by becoming the reactant um, for a different uranium atom in this case. All right, and then fusion, um, <clears throat> if you took peas, you've heard of fusion as the way we formed a lot of the elements in the stars. Um, so we take two relatively small things, kind of smush them together, and you get something that is bigger, all right? So in fission and fusion reactions, we have two reactants, whereas in alpha and beta, we just had one. And fission, we're breaking something into smaller pieces, and fusion, we're making um, something a little bit bigger. All right, so what I really want you to focus on in this unit is being able to um, understand and complete nuclear decay reactions, okay? So in all of these examples, um, I have reactions that are missing a piece. In this case, they're each missing a product, all right? <clears throat> so nuclear reactions do not obey the law of conservation of mass in the same way that chemical reactions do but they do um, require conservation of mass number so this top number here must like that has to add up on this side to the same thing on this side so what that means is 226 which is the only number on the top over here would have to equal whatever number is here plus four all right so that I've, I've drawn that there. All right, so now if we write that in terms of x just to make it a little bit easier to solve, right, and then solve for x, we get 222. So that's going to be the mass number for our product. <clears throat> and then um, the nuclear charge is also conserved. So whatever number is on the bottom, remember which is our nuclear charge, that's how many protons are there, those numbers also have to add up. So if we have 88 plus something is going to be, or sorry, 88 is going to equal something plus 2, and we solve and we get 86. Okay, so now remember from when we just did atomic symbols, if 86 is the number of protons, there's only one element that it can be, okay? Um, so if we look at our periodic table, you'll see that element number 86 is radon, and it will have a mass of 222, right? So we basically use algebra to get the top and the bottom number, and then use our periodic table in combination with this bottom number to get the element symbol, okay? Um, I'm going to go through the rest of these relatively quickly. Um, if you feel comfortable with this, I would recommend just pausing and seeing if you could do them yourself and then check your work. Um, but if you're still a little confused, I'm going to keep going um, and hopefully it will be clear by the end. Okay, so um, for this one, our numbers are smaller. This is a fusion reaction. Um, we have 2 plus 2 on the one side and something plus 1 on the other. So that's going to give us x equals 3 for our mass. Okay, and then for the bottom number, we have 1 and 1, and then something and 1, so the, our bottom number is going to be 1. All right, the element that is number 1 is hydrogen, so that will be our product there. All right, our next one is a fission reaction. These are the hardest ones to balance. Not that they're that hard, but it's just a little more complicated because we have this 4 here. So what the 4 means is that we have 4 of these neutrons. So anything that's here, we need to multiply by 4. So on this side, instead of just 1, we'll have 4 times 1 as our number on the top, right? And that gives us a mass of 42, 142 if we solve it. And then on the bottom, um, we'll just have 4 times 0, which is still just 0, right? So if we solve for x here, we have element number 54, which is xenon, and it has a mass of 142, okay? And then the last one we have here, um, this is a beta decay because we have that electron. The first one we did, I didn't mention, but it's an alpha decay, all right? Um, 234 plus something equals something plus zero. So obviously our x is 234. That one's pretty straightforward. And then over here we have 90 equals something minus one. So this one, a lot of times students get messed up because we've got that negative in there. So remember in beta decay, we're converting a neutron to a proton. So this bottom number actually goes up. So that's where we get the 91 from right um, and then that would be the element symbol that's for element number 91 all right so um, I hope this helps and we'll do a little practice and get really good at balancing nuclear equations <laughs>